Hey guys, this is Sanar. I hope you're doing great today and welcome to your 33rd tutorial in Basic Statistics 1 in Excel. In this tutorial, we're going to start calculating probabilities. And if you don't want to know the theory behind empirical probability distributions and normal distributions, you need to check out those tutorials. Because in this tutorial, we're just going to do it in practice, okay? So, the two formulas we're going to be using is this one, the empirical probability distribution. And that is, uh, what is the probability, P, for X to be a certain value? Well, that's equal to the frequency of observations that have that value divided by the total number of observations. That's our empirical free, um, probability distribution. Um, for the theoretical one, we're going to use the normal distribution, which is described as this, N01. Uh, and the normal distribution uses z values in order to place ourselves on a certain point on the x-axis, which is uh, x x described in z values. I'm going to show you show you guys it actually. It's right here. This is the normal distribution. So what we're saying is these are z values, and depending on what z value we get, we're going to be placed here on a certain point, and then we can use that point to see how many percent are to the left of our our point, which means these are all the people that have that this value and below. So that's the normal distribution. Uh, if you're curious, this also is the empirical distribution, which is actually just uh, a bar chart over our frequencies. And we can see here that this this curve, if we drew a curve here, would go like this, like that, while the normal distribution goes like, like that. So if you place the normal distribution, it would go there, or actually it would go there and have a really long tail because the average is pulled up by these extreme values. But you'll see this when we start calculating it, and also check out the theoretical tutorials. Okay, so f divided by n. Well, we're going to need our n to begin with. So I go into my calculation square, and write equal to count. And we're going to count the number of observations that we have. So I select my data, like that. You see it there, it's selected. And we get 25 people in our, in our data. So we're actually ready now to calculate this formula. Let's start doing it for the first one. Uh, the, the value we want to calculate is 89. So what's the chance if I pick the person out of random from our data set that this person has 89 or fewer Facebook friends? Well, first I need the frequency of these people. So I write equal to, I use the count if function in Excel, which counts the number of things based on a criteria in a certain data set. And the first thing we need is the data set. So I'm going to select it like that. And I put in my first criteria, which is it's going to be less than or equal to. This is my first criteria. And my second criteria is telling Excel what it's less than or equal to. So I put an ampersand sign there, and I choose this cell, which contains the, cell, the number 89. So that is the frequency of observations that have a value which is less than or equal to 89 in this data set that we have here. Now we need to divide all of this by n, which is calculated up here, 25. There we go. And actually, just be extra clear, we're going to multiply this share by 100 so we get it expressed in percent. So this is the formula we're using. I hit enter and we get 32% of the observations in our data set have less than or equal to 89 Facebook friends, which is also the chance of us picking a person out of random from our data set that has uh, this value. If we're going to do the theoretical distribution, we need to, to calculate our x bar and the standard deviation because we need to, to standardize uh, the value that we're looking for to a z value to be looked up in a table, so to speak. So let's do that. Uh, we need the standard, the x bar, sorry, we need the average with the average function that we can use in Excel for our data set. So I selected a data set and we get an average of 268. We need a standard deviation, which we have there. I select the data just like before, like so. And we have a standard deviation of 305 people. So we're ready to calculate our z values. Let's go down here, and what we do is, put a parenthesis and we go 89 minus, see there, that's our x value, 89 minus our x bar, which is x bar, 268. We close the parenthesis and we're going to divide it by the standard deviation for x, which we have here, 305. So our z value for 89 is going to be minus 0 0.588, etc. I'm going to decrease the number of decimal points because it's not going to tell you something. Minus 0 0.59. Well, how do we know? Uh, okay, we can check on the, on the diagram. Minus 0 0.59, we seem to be there. No, sorry, we seem to be there in our normal distribution. This is where we are, and this is the percent of observation, or in other words, the probability of picking a person in this area 
to the left of ourselves here. I could add up these, you know, and just you know look at the diagram. But there's also a more precise way of doing it. Uh, there are actually people have actually created tables over uh, different values, z values for the normal distribution, in order to tell us the percent to the left of our point, our z point in this distribution. Uh, you could learn about the about the formula too and start calculating it, but it's complicated. So you know it's a bit too early for you guys to learn that. So we're going to use a table. Uh, and this table, these tables usually look like this. There are a bunch of numbers like this. They can look a bit confusing, I know, but if you check it out, this is our z values right here. And this is our percent till vänster, as we say in Swedish, which means to the left. Okay, so this is the percent of observations to the left of us, i.e. this highlighted area here. So if we want to find the point on the z axis, which is it, which it is in this case, and then we find the percent of the area on, below the curve to the left. And our z value, as we see here, was minus 0 0.59. So let's start you know, looking that up in the table. We go over here and we can see, there it is, minus 59. So how many percent are to the left of our minus 59? It's 27.76. So we go back to our table and, 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 and we write 27.76. And actually, we were supposed to calculate the z value here, so I'll do is just do it really quick, so we so we have, get a neat and nice table. There we go. So for a z value of minus uh, 0 0.59, we get uh, according to the normal distribution, which is a theoretical probability distribution. Be well aware of that. We get uh, a 27.76 percent chance of picking a person uh, with this value. In the empirical distribution, however, we have 32 percent. Okay, so what are the differences between these two? Well, if this was a list of all the tango dancers in the world, you know, this was the list of all the tango dancers in the world, hmm, this would actually be our true average number of friends fa on Facebook tango dancers have. And this would be our true standard deviation. But my guess is there are more than 25 tango dancers in the world. There are probably thousands. And we can't ask all the tango dancers in the world, how many friends do you have on Facebook? That's going to be very difficult. So we need to work with samples. And that's why we use theoretical probability distributions. And you're going to learn more about this when we talk about sampling. I'm just giving you like a little pretaste of what's coming. Uh, so don't dismiss this just because it's wrong. Uh, it's actually kind of close to the truth when you think about it, considering how different these different... Um, distributions are. Just look at this normal distribution, which is a bell-shaped curve, and at this empirical prob probability distribution, which is a really, really weird curve over here. But we're going to talk more about that in future tutorials. This is, anyway, how you calculate the different probabilities using z-values and an empirical probability distribution. I hope you have some fun with this. Try calculating it for these values uh, and see what you get. Uh, me, I'm just going to quit for now, so working on the next tutorial, and I hope to see you there. Uh, and have some fun, good luck with this, and it's, it, believe me, it's a really important concept in, in science. So have some fun with this and enjoy the fact that we've, we have these amazing measures. Uh, I'll see you later, and have a really nice day. Bye-bye.